Hey there, I'm Sally B and I'm coming to you from my very own home kitchen and today I'm going to show you how to make my smoked haddock and potato hash. For this I'm using Albert Bartlett rooster potatoes which are my very best favourite and I'll tell you why that is, simply because they hold their shape, they have a brilliant flavour and although they are fluffy on the inside they do keep their shape so it's perfect for a hash like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the heat on in the pan and as per the recipe I'm just going to do a little drizzle of olive oil and a small knob of butter and what that allows you to do is heat the oil a little bit higher without it burning so let's just get that going in there now the recipe calls for two small onions so I've chopped those up let me pop those into the pan now and they're going to start sizzling away and they need about five minutes just to start going translucent so we'll let that start going. Meanwhile, I'm going to show you how to do the fish. So this calls for smoked haddock. And what I've done is actually bought some undyed, I've already prepared that, and I've got some dyed smoked haddock. Now, I like to eat clean, which means as few chemicals as possible. However, this was on special offer, so I never turned down a good bargain, so it's a great thing to do. Obviously if you can save money while you're buying your fish then that's really good. Let's turn that down a little bit. Now if you buy your fish with the skin on uh, you can either ask your fishmonger to cut the skin off or you can prepare it yourself. Very simple. You need a sharp knife and you just do the first indent at the tail of the fish along the skin and then all you do, it's so simple and lots of people kind of get afraid of how to do this but actually you just whiz it along and you can see that it's just coming off really easily coming off the skin. Because this is smoked fish it gives it a gorgeous flavour and it's kind of part cooked so it's not quite as flaky and that makes it easier to handle. So there we go, as easy as that. Don't forget to give your onions a little stir. You can use a large frying pan for this. I'm using a um, non-stick wok just because it's a bit bigger than the frying pan that I've got. So the fish I'm now, let's just get rid of that little bit. The fish I'm now going to just cut up. You can always just go along the backbone with your finger and check if there's any big bones in there and remove those. But usually these days the fishmonger would have prepared it and taken those out for you. So that's the fish ready. Right, now the next thing to add in is the potatoes. So I've already parboiled my potatoes. So the rooster potatoes, I did peel them, often I don't, but for this dish I did. And I've cut them into little centimetre cubes like this. And I've parboiled these for about five, six minutes. So, that the, oh, there we go, you see? So they're all nice and soft. So they're really already cooked. So I'm going to add that in here. This gives it the hash part of the deal. And then I've also got my garlic. So I'm going to add the garlic in. Gives it lovely flavour. I've got bacon here. So I'm actually not going to add any salt into the dish because obviously the bacon has salt in it already. This is going to add delicious flavour. So let's add that in. It actually doesn't really matter what order you put these in. It's just all going to start cooking together. Make sure everything's coated in the olive oil and the butter. I'm going to let that bacon cook off. And I'm also going to add in frozen peas. Now, if you want to use other vegetables, you can. You could use sweet corn. You could actually add anything into here. You could add diced carrots. You could add broccoli, asparagus. It's always good to use whatever's in season that you can get hold of fresh. Um, and if not fresh, frozen is fantastic. If you spend your money on any frozen food, I would suggest you spend it on frozen vegetables because they really keep their freshness nicely. Okay, that's all cooking away nicely. So now I'm going to make some stock. I've just got vegetable stock here. So you need three quarters of a pint of this. So let me just fill this up with my magic tap. Always try to buy low salt stock. 
because you want to be in control of the salt that you're putting in the dish. And obviously this has got the bacon and the smoked fish in it, which does have some salt. So I'm going to add the stock in now. Maybe reserve a little bit for later just to see how you're getting on. And that's all looking really good. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. And now the fish is going to go in. Like so. And the white smoked haddock, the undyed smoked haddock. Now once you've popped your fish in, you have to be quite careful because you don't want the fish to completely fall apart. So I'm just going to stir this quite gently. And this is going to take about 10 minutes to cook completely. Remember, I have pre-cooked the potatoes. So they don't need to cook through anymore. Let's turn it right up, get it bubbling away. And you'll see when the fish turns from translucent to opaque, that's when it's done. So the bacon, I can see, is all cooked. I'm just waiting for the fish to be cooked, and then we'll let everything drop down a little bit, and that will be totally gorgeous. Now, for those of you that joined in with our cook-along, we have got winners, and I have to tell you who the very lucky winners are. Congratulations, and what you've won is a copy of my latest book, The Secret Ingredient, and I'll sign it for you and we'll get that straight off to you. So, Catherine Canlon, congratulations. Maggie Muir, well done to you. Lynette Jenkins, well done to you. And Angela Hamilton. They're the four lucky winners and we'll be really pleased to send your books off to you. Um, let's just give this a little bubble away. We also had some questions about... Uh, the ingredients and the questions I've been getting are uh, can you use other vegetables? So yes you can. Do you have to use Albert Bartlett potatoes? Of course you don't have to use Albert Bartlett potatoes but this is my chosen uh, favourite one just because of the flavour and once you try it then you'll understand why. Um, can you use different fishes? Someone asked me if you could use salmon. Uh, it's not great for this dish, salmon, because salmon does fall apart, it's more of a flaky fish and you need a fish that holds together. So you can see in here, even though this is bubbling away, the fish is cooking nicely but staying in good chunks, good pieces, which is great. What I now need to do is get a bowl out ready to serve it in. And then all you're going to add to this is some black pepper, let me get that now, and some chopped parsley and you serve it up. Now, as you can see, this doesn't take long to cook. Um, the preparation took me probably about 10 minutes beforehand. So if you're going to come home from work and want to have a nice healthy dish to make, you can always do the prep before you go or the prep the night before. And then it's just a case of popping it together and cooking it and eating it nice and fresh. I'm actually going to just check the fish. We're nearly done. I think it needs another couple of minutes. You don't want to overcook your fish, but just make sure that it's cooked all the way through. So let me get a nice bowl out. Actually, we'll use this bowl. We also had a question about whether this was good if you want to lose weight. Well, if you looked at all the ingredients, potatoes are fantastic. Many people get confused and think that potatoes aren't a particularly healthy option. I have to tell you that they absolutely are. If I was to hold a handful of potato and say a handful of sweet corn, people would assume that the sweet corn was the healthier option. Actually, it's not. The potato is much more nutrient dense than that. So, uh, potato is a better option than pasta, than rice. It's a, a great carbohydrate that is absolutely jam-packed with vitamins. So, I really want to encourage you to eat that as much as you can. Let's have a look how we're doing. Do you know what? I think we are done. The fluid, uh, sorry, the liquid in there is thickening up with the potato and this is looking delicious. So, I'm going to get a nice big serving spoon. You need to cook this at home until the potatoes are completely soft but not going mushy 
until the bacon and the fish is completely cooked through but it doesn't take terribly long if you feel that it needs more liquid feel free to add the rest of your stock if not um, you can just add a little bit and see how you go right I'm going to switch that off and spoon it into here The smell is just gorgeous because you've got the smoked fish, you've got the smoked bacon, the garlic, the onions. Let me pop that down there. Finally, before I serve it, I would just pop a nice sprinkling of chopped parsley on there. And there we have it. That's my smoked haddock and potato hash using Albert Bartlett rooster potatoes. Thanks for all of those that are going to have a go and join in. And well done to our competition winners. And I will see you very soon.